everyone. Welcome to today's Take a Deeper Dive webinar with Bo Sant. Sorry about that, Brad, just saw your message. So we're just getting started. Wanted to allow for a few more minutes for everyone to come in. Um, for those of you who haven't been with us before, welcome. This is, uh, I believe, the fourth in our series of Deeper Dive webinars. Today, you'll have myself, Craig Baldwin. Uh, I'm Partnerships Director at LOSANT, as well as Scott Allen, a solutions engineer who'll be taking us through the inventory tracking solution architecture uh, and uh, a, a real use case that we've used it with. As a quick review of LOSANT and the platform we provide to the marketplace, <clears throat> the LOSANT platform is broken up into five key components, edge compute, devices and data sources, data visualization, visual workflow engine, and, and user, user experiences. Today, a lot of what we will do, uh, we'll focus on just a couple of these key components, but we encourage you to check out the platform and our documentation afterwards to get a deeper understanding of each of them and, and how they work when creating a solution. These are just some of the customers that we work with today. So these are entities who are leveraging and using the LOSAMP platform uh, in order to build their own solutions or applications. So let's talk inventory tracking. Uh, today, Scott is gonna take us through an inventory tracking solution uh, that he has built using the LOSAMP tool set. So with that, I'm actually gonna stop my share and pass it over to Scott. Apologies, guys. We're going to give Scott just a couple minutes. He's having trouble connecting, and then we'll get him online. But let's just talk a little bit about what the goals are of a typical inventory tracking solution, uh, especially those that we see with the LOSAMP platform. So first and foremost is to know the actual inventory count of a particular asset, not an estimate of each item. <clears throat> what can be done utilizing LOSAMP tools is to display an inventory status and how the levels are changing over a period of time. This allows you to highlight any unusual trends and how the inventory is changing, and of course, draw any insights about that change uh, within your operations. The other big thing is sort of a real-time notification alert. So with the right personnel, enabling or allowing them to know when inventory is low, or even in some cases, if inventory is building out. Uh, how that can be taken care of. So providing real-time alerts and notifications is another big piece. Let's back out and see if Scott is available. Sorry about that, guys. Here you go. Here's a list of those bullets. So using an example of how that would work using LOSANT, let me put this in the full screen. Here is an architecture. So in our office today, we actually have a couple scales, uh, which are talking serial to a LOSANT edge compute device. In this case, that device is some type of Linux gateway that is running the LOSAN edge agent. And the edge agent is being utilized to read that serial information as it comes in. We're then able to take that raw serial data and pass it via secure MQTT up to the LOSAN platform, the cloud platform that is. As it gets up to LOSAN, you're now able to harness all the other tools that we provide for visualization, long-term storage, setting up cloud and application workflows. And then of course, for many of our customers, the end output is some type of end user experience or visualization. So taking that important data and then sharing it with your clients. Within the office, here's a setup that we have. So we have a couple bolts that are sitting on the scales and we're able to tell in real time what is going on with those bolts, how many we have the particular edge gateway device that we're using in this case is an Advantech Uno. 
and then you can see uh, the sensors that are associated with those scales right here. So we're reading serial from the scales and then sending it up to the Avantech gateway, which is running the edge agent, and then the data gets passed on to the LoSAN cloud. On the left, we have six bolts, on the right, two. And then you can see the uh, scale, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, transceivers in this place, in this case, excuse me. So I think we have Scott with us now. I'm gonna go ahead and pass things over to Scott. I've stopped the share of my screen so that he can take over and jump into the demo. All right, hello everyone. Um, sorry, I was a little late, but um, thanks Craig for that introduction about inventory tracking. Uh, today we wanna show you an example of an inv inventory tracking model um, that is um, really essential in manufacturing and other process management. Uh, for inventory tracking goals, uh, it's essential that it does a few key items. One of them is that it, you know the actual inventory of each item, not an estimate, but either through its weight or its count, you know the actual inventory. Next, that you can display the inventory status and how the levels are changing over a period of time. Um, also, you can highlight any unusual trends on how your inventory is changing. And uh, you can alert the right personnel or process when inventory is getting low. So uh, before we get into the uh, example that we have here, I wanted to show you the architecture of this particular system that we're using. Um, we're going to see that we are connected to two physical scales that are weighing uh, components on it, and they have a serial output that we are now connecting to a LoSant Edge compute device, which can read the serial input, process it, and send that information up to the LoSant platform by way of a secure MQTT connection. There, we're using our dashboards, our connections, um, uh, the processes, workflows, everything that we normally see. And then, of course, we output it to our dashboards and end user experiences like our um, other applications. So uh, before we get into the application itself, I wanted to take a minute and um, show you the environment that we currently have set up. Um, here we have our setup using the scales, the edge device, and um, the serial converter. So let me focus on each one of these here. The um, silver boxes or the silver platforms that you see that are holding the blue bins and the bolts in them, those are our actual industrial scales. Um, very precise, able to tell us um, by weight, we can easily calculate how many units we have on each scale. And um, it is communicating to our edge devices through serial. And with these particular scales, we're actually using a converter, so that way we can plug a USB connection into our edge device. So that's what these black devices are here that we're highlighting. They are the uh, USB uh, converters. And then finally, up here, we have our edge compute device. Now, this particular device is from Advantech, a partner of ours, uh, but we, uh, have a lot of other supported edge compute devices. Um, they're uh, from Dell, um, from Dell, from HP, Raspberry Pis. Um, we have a list on the LoSant uh, website if you are interested in those. And um, really, any computer that is running Linux and can support Docker containers is able to run as our ledge, edge compute agent. Um, the agent is software that's running on that, that is, enables us to download workflows to the device and uh, really specify how we um, get information from the devices and send it up to the, to the cloud. 
Okay, so now let me show you our actual application. So we're going to start here with a um, dashboard that we have that is monitoring the individual scales, the two scales that we have here, uh, one for a container of nuts and one for bolts. Um, and this is information that I am controlling manually for the sake of our demonstration today. Um, when we have the scales working automatically, we'll see a constant uh, display of information coming across. Uh, but we have indicators here showing you, first of all, the last reported status, uh, the number of nuts and bolts that we have received from each of the scales. We have a time history chart showing us how that information has changed over the last hour. And then we also have an indicator here showing us the status as far as, uh, in this case, we have eight of each particular device. Um, and that inventory is acceptable to us. Now, let me change this so that we get down to a lower number for one of our items. And that's here. And we'll see that the, the tank or the container showing uh, the number of inventory has gone low. And also our inventory status here went from green to yellow and is telling us that it's low. And if the worst were to happen and we run out of a particular part, then we're going to see zero and that it's out. Now, one of the real keys of using an inventory management system is making sure that you have enough inventory on hand. If you have too much, well, that's an extra cost, and that's something that you've got to store. If you don't have enough, you have a situation like we have here where the um, process has to stop while we add more inventory in and, and get things back to the way they should. So I will do that right now. Uh, say we restock the parts, our inventories are okay, and the process continues. Down here at the bottom, we also have a comparison of the two inventory levels, and an indicator that tells us if the inventory is balanced or not. Uh, by changing, uh, again, one of the uh, components where we have more of one than another, we're going to get the red indicator here that the inventory is out of balance. Now, also on our dashboard, uh, we have a layout of where we have the, the scales currently operating. Um, those are the two green circles that you have here. And you may have noticed that as I change the inventory levels, those green circles change to yellow and red, indicating their, their status. So let me bring that back here so that everything's in balance. And let me show you what we did in order to um, create this particular environment. So let's start with the devices. Uh, we have three devices. One is the edge gateway that we have here, and the other is the scales reporting the, the number of bolts and nuts that we have. Now, these particular scales were tracking as peripheral devices because they use the edge gateway to communicate to the LOSANT platform, and we have defined several attributes for each of the scales. Um, first of all, we're going to collect the weight from that particular scale. Uh, we're going to convert that weight into the number of units that we have there. Uh, we have a restock status. In other words, is the current inventory good? Does it need restocking or are we out? We have the coordinates of where we put um, that indicator on our indoor floor plan. And we also have a connector for when the um, the device is connected or not. Now, besides the attributes, we've also added some device tags for each of the devices. The um, device tags don't change for each reporting of data. They are static values. Um, and so really the important one that we have here is the path for that particular scale. Since these devices are reporting through a serial interface, and it's USB, the edge device really doesn't know when it gets a reporting from a scale what's a nut and what's a bolt. It's just passing the information through. But part of the information that's passed is the path for that particular device, and that's how the cloud layer knows that this particular weight is for a nut versus a bolt. 
Also for each device, we are, have a unit weight. What does an individual nut weigh, an individual bolt? And also at what level of inventory do we want to mark that as being low so that we can reschedule or uh, restock that particular inventory? So the devices are, are very straightforward. Now, let's look at the workflows involved. And since we are using an edge device, there is an edge workflow that is collecting information from the scales. And those are the ones that you see here. Uh, from the uh, edge workflow point of view, we have two scales sending the information uh, to us. And since we don't know what's a nut or a bolt, we just, we're just calling them left and right in this case. Each one will have a serial path. That way we know exactly what uh, serial port is sending the information at what speed we're doing it. Also for serial devices, we can send a command to it um, as soon as we recognize that the port is open. And in this case, we're sending a command of WC, which is write continuously. So when the scale is up and running automatically, it's going to be sending, I believe, 70 readings per second of the weight on that particular scale. One of the other things we define for a serial device is the delimiter we use. Uh, in this case, each reading is separated by a return and new line. And so that way we can process that stream properly and make sure that we're treating each, um, each register as its own process. Now for each one of these, we are using the same throttle command to send information up to the cloud platform. Now, as I said, these are reporting very quickly, 70 times a second, which is really too much for the cloud platform to keep up with. So what we're doing is using a throttle node as a way to send information to the cloud every two seconds. And so we set our um, parameter here that we're sending it 30 times a minute or every two seconds. And we're going to send the same data path that was reported to us and that would be the path of the device itself and its weight. So once we get that, we actually send that information up to the cloud platform, and that's really all we have the edge agent doing. We have one other function, but I'll, I'll come back around to that in just a few minutes. Um, so we've sent the information up through our MQTT connection. So the next thing I'll show you is a workflow happening in the cloud environment of how we're interpreting that information. So here we're receiving the MQTT message. And the next thing we do is we decode the JSON that we're receiving through that message into a device parameter that we can work with. So we're going to get um, a device reading based upon the path of that device. And that's where we associate a path with a nut or a path with a bolt. And with that, then we have to do a little bit of calculations. And in this case, what we're doing is we're gonna calculate the number of units by taking the total weight that was reported here and dividing it by the unit weight that we stored as one of the tags in the um, device. We're putting the result in our working structure under the name of units. And that way we can start checking, first of all, the inventory levels. So if you remember another tag we had for each device is at what threshold do we want to show that something needs to be restocked? That's the tag that we have here. And if our number of working units is less than or equal to that amount, we want to set the status. So that's what this conditional is doing. First of all, if that conditional is not true, in other words, our inventory is greater than that threshold, we're going to set that inventory status equal to zero, meaning everything is okay. However, if it's not, in other words, our current inventory level is equal to the threshold or less, right now we're going to set the um, inventory status equal to one. In other words, it's getting low. And after that, we want to check to see is the inventory, uh, is the working units equal to zero. If that's the case, then we're gonna set the inventory status equal to two, which we consider a critical level. 
But regardless of which path we used, here is where we're going to set the device state. And that way we can process that in, a, in another way. So we're going to actually move from this workflow to another workflow, which is processing all of the uh, conditions that we have and how we're getting that information. Back on the dashboard, you may remember we have this indicator here that tells us if the two inventory statuses are balanced. In other words, are they equal or not? This particular workflow is the one that will enable us to determine that. So here's what we're going to do in a case like that. We, um, when the device is reported from the previous workflow, it comes to this workflow. And the first thing we're going to do is, first of all, make sure that the device state that we received is the one that is defining the number of units. There are other um, reporting that's going on with the device, um, and not all of them contain the units. And so we wanted to make sure that the, the units are defined in this, that way we don't have any errors reported in our workflow. So if it does have the units reported, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to store that unit as a variable in our application using the key of its trigger ID and units. So we're taking the data unit from that payload and we're going to store it in that value. Uh, next, we're going to get both the latest reported units from both the nuts and the bolts, regardless of which one we just stored, and we're getting it from local memory rather than doing another query against our time series data. This is a faster uh, way of getting the information because we're going through this workflow a lot and we want to make sure that we get everything processed as quickly as possible. So we're getting both the nuts and the bolts last units reported and then we're doing a conditional and this is are the number of, um, first of all, do we have the correct number of units for each one. So we're doing a quick check there. Again, just to make sure if one of them hasn't reported, we don't get an error in, our, uh, in this particular workflow. So next we're going to check, are the two equal? And so what we're doing is we're taking the absolute value of the difference between them and determining if they're equal to zero. Now, if they are not equal, we want to report that. And one of the things that um, I wanted to show on the dashboard is that we have a list of events. So let me move one of these down to where it is out of balance. We see the indicator changed right away. We've reduced the number of nuts here. And if I refresh this particular block, we're going to see an event. Uh, we've talked about events on some of our other deeper dives, but for those of you that weren't with us, an event is something that you can define within your workflows like we did that allows you to track instances of a problem. In this case, our nuts and bolts inventory are out of balance. Um, and this is something that can be manually resolved or recognized. Uh, so if I were to say, well, I, I filled it myself and I can add that and submit it, or we can have the system do that for you automatically. So let me um, show you here where we have the uh, balance. So now I'm going to come down. And this is what we saw before. When things are out of balance, we're going to see if an event has already been created for this particular incident. Since we are checking things so quickly, we don't want to bombard people with messages and events that all of this is out of balance. So instead, we only want to report it once for every incident. So if the event already um, has been reported, we're not going to do anything else. That's what the, uh, this particular condition is um, checking. However, if it has not been reported, this is the first time that we've done it, we want to add an event to the list. And you see, here's the summary. Here's the, um, the description of that so that we can report it being out of balance. The other thing that we could do besides adding an event is we could send an email or a text message out to our um, inventory manager 
or the operator who's in charge of this just to let them know you're getting to a point where you need to add inventory. Um, also, if your system is connected to an ERP process, our system could actually create an order for more inventory and place that order through your ERP system. It all depends on the level of connectivity that you need between them. Then after we add the event, we also have, uh, we store the event ID for that and that keeps us from adding different events for the same incident. Now let me go up here to the other path and that is that um, our inventory is in balance. Um, so in other words, we'll, we'll come over here and I will, uh, we add particular inventory so that we can um, get things back in balance. You can see that our indicator here has happened and if I refresh our events, I may have been a little fast, the event will disappear because our workflow is automatically handling that for you. So if we, um, if the inventories get back into balance, we see if an event exists for this incident, in this case one did. So what we're going to do is modify that event. We're going to mark it as resolved with a comment here of the inventory is rebalanced. Of course, you can add much more complicated messages here if you want to add specifics uh, as far as the weight levels and things like that. We can include those in those messages as well. And then the last thing we're going to do is clear that event out of our local variable. That way, if the next time we get out of sync again, we'll create a different event for it. So that is um, how we are monitoring our inventory. Um, now, through our demonstration here, we've been focusing on a more industrial process where we've got the scales and how people are bolting pieces together. However, the same type of application can be used with different equipment in a completely different inventory to give you the same type of results. For example, uh, hospitals may want to use an inventory tracking system to track their pharmaceuticals and uh, when they're being used and when they need to be restocked. Uh, we also have a customer of ours that is using this, uh, something very similar to this, where they are putting plates in their cafeteria on a scale. And as people come in and they take their plates, they're monitoring the weight on the scales. And that way they know what are the more popular areas of their cafeteria. Um, just by using the same type of technology. So this is very flexible. It allows us to uh, use many different industry, many different types of equipment. All depends on what you need to track. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you here is a, um, a way that we can actually send commands from the dashboard back to the scales. So I'm going to unlock this particular block here. And you can see we've got two buttons here. One's called tear nuts and tear bolts. Um, tear being the term to have scales recalibrate themselves. So if we think that our weights are getting off, um, that happens from time to time, what we would do is take everything out of the, um, the bin that is being measured and we would send the command either to the nut scale or the bolt scale to recalibrate. So these buttons would actually send a command back to the workflow uh, to the actual device. And this is what we're seeing here where uh, we're sending the command to tear left or tear right. And this is being performed on the edge agent. And what it's going to do is write on the same serial path that we got the information from and we're going to send it a series of commands. First of all, we're going to send a return. That way, if it's reporting a lot of information, it's going to stop. Uh, we're going to wait a second, and then we're going to send another command, in this case, the tear command, telling it to reset as if there was nothing on the scale. And then we're going to wait again and send another command to say, okay, start writing continuously again. We put, we refill the bin with the proper point 
uh, with inventory, and that way the scales will start reporting more accurate information. Just something you'll need to do from time to time, but it is an illustration of how we can go back from our dashboard through the workflow down to the edge agent to have it right to the serial device and then start reporting again. Okay, well, my goal through this demonstration was to show you how easy it is to use the LoSAN platform, both the edge and the cloud, plus the new serial nodes as a way to um, control your device. So now I'm going to send it back to Craig so that uh, we can answer any questions that have uh, come up and um, I'll do that right now. Craig? Awesome, thank you so much, Scott. I'm glad we get you on there because that was a really good yeah. <laughs> um, Fantastic. So at this point, I want to share a couple resources with, with, uh, with the group. First and foremost, I said this earlier, but for those of you who have not been in the platform, we would encourage you to check out um, <clears throat> the tool set. So if you go directly to losant.com, you can actually create your own free developer sandbox account where you can begin building. We don't really limit the feature set. Uh, so everything is accessible. It's just a matter of how much data you're out, allowed to use. And as you get up and up and running, you'll definitely want to check out our documentation. So at docs.losant.com, there's some fantastic referential information on every single feature within the LoSant platform. We also have the forums. So the forums are um, a wonderful place to uh, really discover and learn and ask sort of the how-to questions. Um, many of them have been asked before uh, and been answered by our community or our internal engineering team, uh, but that's a great place to go. If you're having trouble or stuck, uh, please check out the forums. And then we have some newer pieces of content that we've added recently. One is Losant University. So this is really video-based content that goes deeper into some of the features in the platform uh, to help you as you're trying to ramp up your knowledge of LoSant and build with the tools and then hands-on tutorials. So we have uh, some, some deeper dive walkthroughs and tutorials that are available. All of these links are out there uh, at losant.com. You'll be able to get to them. We'd encourage you to use each of those. One quick update. So we will be doing another webinar April 30th. I would encourage you to go and sign up. This will be a platform update. Um, this is gonna be quite a significant uh, webinar for us as we share about uh, a new feature that will be launching soon. So please uh, check out that particular uh, webinar and, and sign up if you haven't done so already. So at this point, I actually want to take this time to go ahead and answer some of the questions that we received during the course of the webinar. So the first one that we uh, got earlier was uh, what brand of scales are you using? So I've got a couple of other folks on the call today from the LoSant side. Brandon Canada, our head of product, Teron Foxworth, who leads education and is our technical evangelist. Um, they're going to help out answering some of these. Um, but actually, Scott, this might be a good one for you. Do you know the brand of scales that we use um, for this particular demo? Yes. Um, these two scales are from Lodestar Sensors. They are in their industrial scale section. Um, they have different sizes and different capacities, um, but it's Lodestar sensors. Awesome, thanks Scott. And then the next question we had was, and I know you mentioned this a little bit, Scott, earlier in the demo, but um, how would I integrate with SAP or some type of reordering inventory system? Uh, maybe Brandon, since you lead product, that's a good question for you to talk about how we integrate with some other uh, platforms or tools, or in this case, ERPs that are out there. Yeah, absolutely. So most ERPs expose uh, the ability to invoke their transactions or applications through REST interface and SAP specifically, they have a great addition called SAP Gateway, which kind of exposes everything through an OData REST interface. And we can directly um, invoke that using the workflow's HTTP node. So if you're comfortable with uh, an automated reordering system, that would certainly speed some stuff up. You can directly create those purchase requisitions um, through the workflow engine or 
Uh, you can certainly do what Scott had mentioned as well as, you know, essentially automatically send an email uh, to maybe somebody in your purchasing department saying, you know, we need to restock up on X, Y, or Z. And then that person can uh, uh, enter the data into the appropriate ERP system, you know, based on your checks and balances and controls. Awesome. Thank you, Brandon. So another question we had is, um, can I offer an inventory solution similar to this to my customers? So I'll actually go ahead and try to answer that one. The answer is absolutely yes. Um, what's cool about LoSant is a lot of our customers and partners um, will use the tool set. And very, um, very good example earlier was with Scott to use internally and for internal stakeholders. So, and many times that just means using workflows and dashboards. Um, however, just as commonly, if not more, uh, our customers and partners are developing applications that they can take to market and sell under their own brand. And that's really where the experiences piece of Losant comes into play. So <clears throat> there, there's nothing stopping you from going out and offering your own inventory tracking solution with Losant under your brand. And in those instances, um, you know, those end users typically would have no idea that Losant is a technology being utilized to do that. Uh, hopefully we're just an easier way for you to get that solution to market. Another question that we received earlier, which is, uh, can you track inventory without using scales? Can I track it in other ways? Uh, honestly, that's a good question. Probably more of a, of a business question, but Tehran, maybe you want to jump in and try to answer that one. Yeah, 100%. So in this case, we just decided to use a load star sensors and they happen to expose serial that we can read to send the low scent. Um, but really, since low scent, we think of our platform as kind of data up, as long as data can get to us, you can kind of leverage all the tooling that we have to building experiences. So it doesn't really matter what it's actually tracking the actual hardware, as long as we can get the data. And the best way to know if we can get the data is kind of one of two ways. One, things connect directly to LoSent via MQTT or HTTP, or uh, a lot of customers decide to use our edge agent like we showed in this example. Uh, and the edge agent allows access to some local protocols, whether that might be Modbus, Allen Bradley, but in this case we use Serial. Um, so either way, you can use any kind of sensor as long as they didn't get to low set, it doesn't really matter where they're coming from. So in a, in a sense, you can actually also have one application that uses multiple, that leverages multiple different types of tracking, uh, all sitting into low set. Awesome. Thank you, Teron. So here's another good question for you actually is, um, you know, I think this question is uh, really about using other types of sensors kind of on the back of what you just said. So in this example, load cells, vibration sensors, you know, other things that may not actually be talking serial, um, but other digital methods uh, to, to a cloud or to an edge agent. So more of a general question, but, you know, can we support different sensor types and different protocols? Tehran, maybe you can talk a little bit about the capabilities, not only at the cloud level, but then on the edge side of things as well. Yeah, so, so the nice thing is that um, in, in LoSent, because we're just kind of representing your devices in the cloud, uh, the, the data source, the data origin, originization, like I mentioned before, uh, could really be any type of protocol. So, I mean, we've seen examples of, say, like there's 50, there's 50 different ways to track motion in a room, uh, but they all give you a different level of fidelity. They all give you a different way to track motion and all, all have their own positive benefits. So in that case, it's really nice to take all of those different types of ways you can track motion in a room and then combine that uh, to really give you kind of an aggregated view. And that's really where low scent shines is that uh, you could use multiple methods of tracking and then combine that to say this is the this is the most correct answer that we can define or we can use multiple different types of tracking for single sources to say you know what uh, this item over here is using the low star scales this item over here is using um, RFID presence to detect uh, how many you name it uh, but to us to low scent that's just one thing it's one number. So it's really nice because you can have that abstraction layer between your hardware um, and the, the actual experience that you're building on top of that. Awesome, thanks, Ron. So here's another great question that we received and it, it says, can you build this so that each location serves as a source of multiple sensor inputs? 
So in this case, they have approximately 500 locations, each with anywhere from five to 15 sensors of different types. And so maybe this gets at sort of accommodating for those different sensors and, and perhaps even getting into the tagging aspect of what we do on the device management side. Teron, you want to take this one? I think this would be another great one for you as well. Yeah, these questions really build up on one another. It's great. Uh, so yeah, in this case, now that we, so say we've connected multiple different types of sensors to Losent, now we're at the level of, okay, well, how do I start to um, basically tie these devices to certain entities? So that's where kind of Craig mentioned we have device tags. So generally we would recommend to say, okay, you can have a certain group of devices. All of these devices are tagged with one location. And then the nice thing is that once you get into the experience layer, you can say, all right, I'm going to build an experience, but I want this view to be of this location's view. And then behind the scenes, uh, you can use a workflow to say, okay, let's pull all the devices with that tag. So let's say location A, and then let's look at all the weights for location A, and then we can display that uh, in that one experience for that one location and kind of have that, uh, that multi-tenant uh, experience that is leveraged using low sense tools. Awesome. Thanks, Ron. So with that, we, we've uh, completed all of our questions. Um, one thing I wanted to point out quickly before everyone leaves, this platform update on April 30th is actually going to be about our new stats notebook feature. So that's going to be much more about sort of batch processing of information, doing analytics within the platform. If those are things that interest you, or you've been asking yourself, how can I achieve this with Losant? We're going to have some great answers for you on that particular webinar. So with that, we're going to end it. Thank you everyone for joining us. We will be sending a recording to everyone that's with us today and those who missed the, uh, the webinar. Uh, hope you have a great day and please reach out directly if you have any questions. See ya.